Good morning. good morning. It is there. Good afternoon. No, it's good afternoon. Uh, yeah, again, sorry for not being there. It was always my plan to travel to London, but uh, due to some personal circumstances, I wasn't able to. So I hope that this goes well as well. Uh, I did a former presentation a few weeks ago at the HCC conference, which uh, went very well, I think. So I'm sure we'll uh, we'll get it done. And uh, let me see if I can present my screen as well. I've prepared a, just a very simple PowerPoint presentation with some topics that I was asked about before the last presentation. So I want to repeat these uh, to you and, and fill in a few extras that we didn't have at the time. Um, if at any moment you have questions or comments, feel free to interrupt me and, and ask me. I think I can hear everybody when, even when you shout from back of the, the back of the room. So that, that should be okay. Um, where is it here? If all went well, you currently see the HP calculator distribution opening sheet. Yes, Good. thumbs up. Right. Uh, let me start by introducing myself and then I'll talk a little bit about the company. Um, my name is Klaas Kuperis. I work for uh, Moravia Consulting in the Czech Republic. Uh, I am based in Apeldoorn in the Netherlands, so I'm not in the Czech Republic myself. I've joined Moravia in 2013, so almost 10 years ago. And before that, I was working for a large distributor in the Netherlands, who was um, the exclusive distributor for HP calculators since 2008. So my history with HP calculators goes back uh, quite a while. Not as long as uh, for most of you, I would uh, I would guess, but uh, I've seen a lot and I've seen a lot of changes as well in the uh, distribution setup for, uh, that HP had. Exclusive distributors, master distributors, not master distributors. Uh, and right now we are in a licensing setup, brand licensing setup with, uh, with HP. So how does that work? The, um, oh, sorry. The, um, Current setup with the HP calculators is as following. Uh, HP has uh, offered uh, Moravia Consulting uh, and uh, the company Royal in the US a brand licensing uh, contract, which means that these two companies are now responsible for producing, manufacturing, marketing, distributing the HP calculators all over the world. That does not mean that HP is completely out of the equation uh, because we are still working with people within HP. And whenever we want to release new products, new factories, uh, we are still in touch and need approval from HP, but they are no longer actively producing and uh, creating calculators themselves. The setup itself is quite easy. Uh, the world is basically split up in two uh, segments. Uh, uh, Royal is taking care about the US, so the Americas, and Moravia Consulting takes care about the rest of the world. And uh, that means Europe, Middle East, and Africa, Asia Pacific, where most of our business, Moravia's business, is in Europe and Asia Pacific. Uh, Middle East and Africa has always been a, a smaller region. But that is the split that we are currently seeing. And that means that for these uh, areas, the respective companies are responsible for uh, distribution, marketing, pricing, uh, communication, everything around calculators. And HP itself is no longer involved uh, in, in, in that part of the, of the business. Does that make sense? Is, are there any questions or comments already? No? Move on. But yes, if you make something in Europe, will it be sold in the US? Or if they make something in the US, will we be able to buy it in Europe? That's a good question. Uh, that's a very good question. In, in principle, we are running the same assortment. Um, so I'll talk a little bit more about that in the next slide. Let's see if it switches already. I think this one touches on that as well. New versions of existing products. I got a question on that the last time. Uh, what you might have seen on the HP Museum forum where we communicated this is that the first well, not the first thing, but one of the first things that we did was to ensure that we removed all the excessive packaging options. Um, I don't know how much you know about the distribution of the calculators and the, 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 the setup of the, of the products, 
but HP used to have different language options for pretty much any territory they were working in. Um, with HP 10B2, for example, you had the UUZ option for German, Italian, uh, UUG for Dutch, French, uh, ABA for the Americas, uh, ABF for France. Uh, there were tons of options, and we reduced that and brought it all back to one international package. That makes much more sense production-wise, but also uh, massive cost reduction. And what we are, uh, what we had to do was uh, create one packaging that we could use for the whole world. There will always be example or, or, or exceptions in the future, but that is basically how we've uh, we've set it up. We also needed to comply with uh, local or international rules. So uh, CE marking has become um, much more important. Uh, there's also the specific guidelines and regulations for uh, consumer electronics in the UK. Um, in Australia, there was a new rule that any consumer electronic product needs to, with batteries inside, needs to have uh, a lid on top with screws so that kids cannot just pull it out and uh, swallow the batteries. So those are the minor and some, some, uh, in some cases less minor things that we needed to change uh, on the products. What we are currently doing, and, and I don't see any difference in that in the future, as well as keeping the assortment a, while, a worldwide assortment. However, there might be um, exceptions there. You see in this list as well the HP 10S2, which I don't think any of you have heard of. The HP 10S2 is a product that we launched recently to um, sell into the Australian market. We had a big retail presence there with HP 10S Plus, but as that product has uh, gone out of the assortment for a while and we didn't have an alternative for that, we created the HP 10S2, which was intended, is intended uh, in principle only for the Australian market, but is available for other markets as well. So if Royal decides to sell it in the US, then they have access to that. Uh, we decide to sell it in the Netherlands, then we have access to that. But um, it might be that we don't uh, push it because our focus uh, on the scientific range will be on the 10S Plus and the 300S Plus. Does that answer your question? Thank you. So one other thing that we have. Sorry. Oh, I thought I heard... say thank you. OK, sorry. I, I thought I had heard another question. Now, so the, what, what we have been doing uh, with the products is um, the major thing that we have been doing around these products is making sure that there was stocks. Um, one big problem in uh, electronics at the moment is ensuring you have enough chips to go inside of the products, to have uh, logistics under control, and that proved to be an enormous challenge around the calculators. Um, so that was the, the big task that we had to ensure that there was stock, that there was availability again, that the products comply with uh, European and uh, international regulations uh, and making sure that the assortment is brought back to uh, a normal standard again. So the last few years, the assortment of HP calculators has been um, uh, declined or the, 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 the 50G went out of stock and 35S went out of stock uh, or went end of life, 10S2, 300S plus went end of life. All of these products went end of life. And what we are currently trying to do is bring back the models that we had and that we think are uh, important, uh, such as the 10S plus and the 300S plus, but also focus on relaunching or launching completely new or former models back so that we Build the assortment back to where it uh, where it used to be and where it should be. Um, a major part of our strategy and our market for uh, or the market for HP calculators is on the HP Prime, uh, which is the flagship of HP at the moment. Um, to give you a bit of insight on the status of where we are. Um, and where we will go, uh, I, I wrote down a few points that, uh, that uh, we had questions on. Uh, so currently the status of the firmware development, which is the most important, well, one of the most important parts, of course, is that we have hired uh, Jeff Tupper. Jeff Tupper is the uh, designer of all the graphing apps on Prime, living in Canada, the pedagogy company. 
and he has been hired by Moravia to work on uh, Prime to uh, remove all the bugs that we saw to add new programs uh, to uh, work on a new uh, connectivity kit software uh, because the old connectivity kit software was linked to the HP servers and uh, as we don't or we will not have access to that in future anymore we needed to change that to have it uh, download the firmware from the Moravia service so that is what we have been working on very hard um, beginning of the year, we launched a minor firmware update because of exam uh, regulations here in the Netherlands, which was quite urgent at the point at the moment. And we are currently working on a larger, uh, pretty large firmware update, actually, that I hope we can launch uh, somewhere in November together with the new uh, connectivity kit and also together with the uh, the apps, so the, the, that, that the firmware, that the software of Prime is the same on any platform, uh, whether you're using it on the held, handheld or on the PC or on your Mac or iPhone or Android, it all should feel and work the same, and that is what we're currently working on. That proved to be a lot more work than we expected, uh, because um, due to uh, decisions that were made at HP over the last few years, not a lot of development has been done. So we needed to yeah, not start from scratch, that would be not fair, but we needed to kickstart it again and, uh, and work quite a bit of issues that we needed to take care of. That's the reason why it took a bit longer than we uh, hoped for. Um, our team size and the members that are currently working on Prime, uh, it's, I'm responsible for uh, for the Prime as far as education and as far as marketing and communication goes. Then we have Jeff, uh, who is responsible, lead uh, responsible for uh, uh, software. Uh, we are working with uh, the University of Grenoble on the, on the uh, CAS uh, part of things. And we have in the Czech Republic uh, five people who are working on HP calculators with Prime obviously being a, a major part of that. So I think that the number of team members working on HP calculators and Prime have uh, increased a lot and that can only benefit the quality and uh, the, the size of the market uh, for, for HP. Future plans are to uh, make sure that Prime is uh, back on track as far as uh, firmware and software goes, that we uh, delete the bugs that were reported, that we work on a new connectivity kit uh, setup. Um, but we are also looking at uh, extensions such as a full Python solution on Prime. Uh, Hardware-wise, Prime can do much more than any competitive calculator in the market, and we are looking at maybe releasing different versions of Prime in future that can work in different markets or different categories. So that's all uh, not set in stone, but that is what we are uh, that we that is what we are thinking about. Any questions so far? Do you um, do you see recovering the Smart screen? Would you look at reintroducing that or anything along those lines for maybe a I2C capability for sensors or in the classroom, that sort of thing? Yeah, we have been looking at that as well with the uh, the Stream Smart solution. That's I think that's what you're talking about. Um, we're currently not looking into that, and that is because the the company behind that stream smart uh, Fourier is no longer well they're still in business but it hasn't proven to be a very valuable relationship and um, we don't see any possibilities in the near future to uh, relaunch that again what we will continue to do is the wireless kit and uh, the wireless connectivity classroom uh, set of, of prime uh, so that we will keep and we are looking into possibilities on, uh, on, on, uh, on adding data loggers and data streamers in future, but not in the near future. No. Thank you. So currently what we've been working on very hard is uh, new editions of uh, existing and new ex uh, editions of, um, sorry, something on my screen, but I don't think you see it. Um, 
relaunching products that, that have been put end of life in the last few years. Uh, this is a picture of the HP 10S2, the one that we have launched for the Australian market, a very simple uh, standard scientific calculator for uh, intended for secondary education. Very cheap calculator, uh, but all in HP uh, style. Uh, we are also looking at uh, relaunching the HP 10S Plus and the HP 300S Plus. Uh, the first one is already on its way. The other one takes a little bit more time, but we want to have that ready before the start of next back to school, still school models. We are currently also looking at extending the portfolio with the line of office calculators for the office market, for uh, retail stores, for um, standard uh, consumer use. And we are currently working on a line of collector edition calculators. Uh, the first one of that will be the HP 15C, which we, we, we will relaunch, um, hope, well, not hopefully, that's, that's planned already by the end of Q1 of 2023, which means that it will be in Europe around Q2, so that's April timeframe, um, which will uh, is a fully functional uh, 15C with an update to the 2011 version that it has three times more memory uh, than the uh, 2011 and the original version. It runs on the hardware of the 12C, the current 12C. Uh, all the bugs that were reported in the 2011 version have been removed, so it's a much more stable and uh, much better and faster machine. And the plan is to launch that under the collector's edition series. Uh, that's the working title at the moment, at least. And the idea is to launch, to relaunch actually um, other uh, former flagship models of HP on the deadline as well. That is to uh, show, well, partly to show the community how important we, you know, feel that the legacy of HP calculators is, um, but also because they are, they're just great calculators and we want to ensure that that, uh, that, 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 that that vision is brought back alive a little bit uh, more. We, I, we believe that, the, that uh, the HP calculators within HP have become, over the last few years, a bit of a, yeah, we have it and we don't want to get rid of it because it's legacy, uh, but we're not going to focus on it anymore uh, products. That is what it turned out. And there were perfectly uh, fine reasons to do that, but we want to bring back the yeah, the legacy, the nostalgia, or choose a word and, and do this with, with uh, adding these kind of products as well. So there is going to be an extension of the portfolio uh, in the next few months. Uh, I would say if we have this call again in a year from now, the assortment will be drastically increased. Um, but what we don't want to do is uh, forget about the quality aspects that have always been linked to HP products. So we don't want to just find any cheap Chinese product, put an HP stamp on it, and then promote it as an HP product. We do want to keep track of the quality issues. We do want to make sure that we, if we're launching new products, they are, uh, they are well thought through. That's what I wanted to, uh, to tell you from my side of uh, things. I'm sure there are questions, so I left uh, more room for this part than I want to talk. Uh, but if there no, are no questions, then I was very clear. That's that's also good, of course, but that's not I, how it went last time. So, I have a, yeah, no. I have a question. Um, uh, I, I realize I think uh, you, you are the intended audience of my presentation tomorrow. So uh, rather than go through it now, I just uh, ask you to take a look at it. Um, I'm Robert Ephraimson. It's uh, Beyond the Beep. So uh, so it almost uh, you you could almost think of it as a job interview. Although I'm probably commuting. Uh, if you have employees in California, you guys maybe maybe that that is what it is. But I, I just I'm just rather than saying everything that I'm going to say tomorrow, I'll just ask you to take a look at it when uh, whether it's on live or uh, or on the YouTube. Yeah, well, make sure uh, to send it to me. I, I'm not entirely sure. I don't have the list of presentations here in front of me, so I'm not entirely sure. But uh, yeah, feel free to send uh, 
if this is a proper job interview, then uh, feel free to send it over. We are, <laughs> what, what, what we are trying to do, and, and that is also the reason why I was very glad that I was invited to do this presentation, is that we want to, so I'm, I'm reading the forum as well, the HP Museum forum, and uh, I'm not always responding to everything immediately because we are very busy and, and sometimes I don't have the answer as well immediately. But what we what we do want to do is is give you as a as a, I'll, I'll call you the community and hardcore users. I mean, you wouldn't be spending your weekend in in London, even though it's great in London. But talking about calculators, if you're not very enthusiastic uh, about it, we uh, want to give you the feeling as well that we're listening to you, that we're taking your comments uh, seriously. Uh, that we cannot always do any everything immediately with it. But um, yeah, if you have great ideas, so well, but feel free to send them over. Yeah. yeah. Well, in short, maybe maybe you're already uh, working on it. The idea is that uh, uh, you considered, uh, in addition to the graphical interface, doing an audio output, more more advanced audio functionality for sound output. Okay. I think I read something about that in the, with the beeps, and uh, I loved it. Let's okay. talk about it uh, on, a, on a later moment. Okay. Awesome. Any other questions? All right. In your list of future models, the list said, uh, well, uh, going back to old calculators, it said business calculators and it said scientific calculators. At the moment, there is no scientific calculator with reverse Polish notation. Now, you've mentioned the 15C coming back as a corrector's edition. That will be the only scientific calculator with RPN on it, would you consider sometime in the future a simpler calculator with RPN? Or are you not allowed to tell us? <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I'm, I'm to tell you uh, anything. We don't have any secrets. We're not, uh, we're not on the stock market anymore, so we can tell you much more than HP could maybe in, in the past. Um, we are looking currently at bringing back the HP 35S because that well, has always been a good seller for HP and um, I think partly answers to your question. The problem with the HP 35S is that the ICs that were used at the time are no longer available, which means that the software needs to be reprogrammed completely. And that might not be extremely difficult or impossible, but it is something that we currently simply don't have the manpower for. Uh, so it is on our priority list. It's not on the top of the priority list. On the top of the priority list was getting everything under control, making sure that we have availability of the standard assortment and then focus again on new products. Uh, the 35S is something that is uh, high on the list and I I, uh, we are currently not looking at any other RPN or non-RPN scientific calculators except for the 10S and 300S, but uh, you never know. Does that answer your question? The 35 would be a good model to bring back, but there is one missing set of functions and there are a few bugs. So reprogramming it, well, good luck. Maybe some of us can help. <laughs> no, I'm not talking about me. <laughs> I can't see you, so I, I cannot use it against you anyway. Don't worry. <laughs> no, the, the 15C was reprogrammed as well with the help of uh, Cyril de Brisson from HP and uh, uh, Jose Gonzalez from Spain. So we are using uh, a lot the help of the community already. We are uh, as well working with Gene Wright and uh, uh, Vladek. Uh, I think he's in that room. I didn't see him. Yeah. That was Vladek who was speaking, by the way. That was Vladek. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, yeah, I can't see. I cannot see anyone or anybody in the uh, everybody in the room. So, uh, no. On on what we call the story of of HP 15C. So we are using a lot the the community where uh, where we can and where it's offered. So uh, now I know who you are. Uh, I I know who to contact. Don't worry. Anyone else? Oh, I, I, I have a question. Um, are you involved with uh, with the Prime? Because uh, I think you also do the Prime emulator 
uh, you know, the thing that is uh, on the iOS and uh, Android. It, it's, uh, do you have any plans to uh, push out uh, maybe uh, more versions of uh, classic uh, range of calculators? Uh, um? So the, um, that's an interesting question. The, the split that HP made at the time when they were uh, signing the license contract was that uh, the apps are all under license or under control by Royal in the US. So if you go to the iOS store and you look up one of the HP official HP emulators, then you will see the the it used to be HP Inc. and now it's Royal Consumer Goods, I think it says. And that was because most of these apps, or at least most of the sales on the apps, was through the 12C and then the so the financial models. Um, HP Prime was considered as an app or the app of the HP Prime was considered as an app and thus fell under the control of uh, Royal. Uh, so my company, Moravia, has n uh, little control over that. What we are currently doing is making sure that the functionality of the Prime apps on iOS and Android is the same as the calculators. And with that, we are, of course, working very closely with, uh, with Royal. Um, so we are not, at the moment, not currently looking at uh, releasing more apps uh, besides getting the, the Prime app under control and, and functioning again. It, it is functioning, but functioning the same. Okay, thank you. No one else? Okay. All clear? I have one question. What is the difference between the 10S Plus and the 10S2, other than maybe a couple of keys moved? Um, the difference between the 10S Plus and the 10S2 is not so much in functionality. Um, the screen quality of the 10S Plus is a little bit better than the 10S2. In all honesty, it's also cheaper. The 10S2 is a cheaper model than the 10S Plus. We are launching the 10S2 currently only in a box version. Uh, here, actually, this is uh, the, the, so in, in this kind of box packaging. Uh, it's only it's not certified as well at the moment yet for the European market because it, it was not it was not intended for the European market. But in terms of functionality. Look and feel the 10s plus and the 10s2 are not that different. The 10s plus, in my opinion, is uh, of a slightly higher quality, but it's also a few euros more expensive. Thank you. Welcome. Okay. And that's also something that we are currently looking at. I mean, this uh, cardboard packaging, especially for the scientific models that are intended for school use, we are planning on going as much as possible into this kind of packaging so no more plastics i don't know how many of you bought an hp prime in a plastic blister but that's uh, in my opinion a disaster first of all you cannot open it without any stanley cutter i don't have it here but it's uh if you cut it in the wrong way it will slice open your hands and it, it it's a lot of plastic uh, it's a mess. So we want to, we are working on packaging as well to make sure that we are environmental friendly, but also from a business perspective, it costs us uh, half of the money uh, to ship this uh, than to ship a blister. So it's, uh, and that will hopefully reflect in uh, customer pricing and satis customer satisfaction. Lars, this is Wodek again. Uh, do you know? Hi, what... Wodek. Okay, I'm now here. Um... Do you realize the cardboard boxes were canceled because thieves would go into a store where there were calculators hanging. They would run a knife along the bottom of the cardboard box. The calculator fell out. The box looked OK, and they took the calculator away. And eventually, the calculator manufacturers started packing them in plastic so people wouldn't do this. So if you use a cardboard box again, you will need a very strong bottom so that people can't just run a knife along it. Just, just no, advice. No. Put more cardboard in the bottom, or put a piece of plastic along the bottom. If you're going to be environmentally friendly and use cardboard, I I know that uh, that remark indeed. Um, 
one point is that these calculators, most of these calculators for schools are not longer sold in retail stores. That sounds strange, but most of them are sold through uh, school resellers, such as uh, uh, Oxford Education, Science Studios in the UK, and the Rekewinkel in the Netherlands, the calculator store. Uh, these kind of, in Germany, you have Dynatech, Kalkuzo, Deutsche Daten Technique, the, 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 the dedicated school resellers. So there, it doesn't really matter. Uh, when there is a demand from retail to sell these calculators, we can, can always look at releasing a blister version. So the, and then there is a difference between blister and blister. The HP Prime had a fully plastic blister with a small uh, cardboard piece on the back. The HP 10S Plus, if you remember, had cardboard on the back and then blister on top. Uh, and this one is fully cardboard. So I agree that putting this in a store might might be very uh, tricky for for stealing it but uh, there's also a lot of stores that put these behind the counter or put these in a special protective case you know stuff like that so but it's a, it's a good demand absolutely yeah. thank you a question in the back um when you were showing your slides you showed us a pie chart but it looked like you may have skipped a slide that had another pie chart. Was that skipped intentionally? No, I did not do anything intentionally. So what what, what exactly do you mean? I think that's just it. It's not me, just for me to yeah. can put it up if you want. Uh, where's the I think it's when the connection yeah. broke down, perhaps. So maybe we thought we lost something. There's one you mean. Oh, okay. Just one. Okay. I thought there was another one. Uh, okay. No, and this was to show you a little bit about the size of the respective market. So it's it's not uh, I didn't put any percentages in it, but this shows you that clearly the USA and the Europe market are the biggest ones and then the, the market in the South Americas is used to mainly consist of graphing calculators that uh, decreased a bit with the uh, exit of the 50G in all honesty, but Prime is doing well in those regions as well. And the rest is Asia Pacific, uh, Middle East and Africa is a very small portion. Thank you. Uh, one, one thing I would like to ask you to do, probably all of my to uh, see if you are releasing updates, could you make sure that the links work and work all over the world, not just from certain parts of the country, because any of the links you issued Either were out of date or didn't didn't work from where I was anyway. You mean links to the websites? The links to the updates and the files. So, sorry, can you repeat that? Any of the software links, the links to the software, the updates, um, i.e., the the connection pack, connectivity pack, and the the BIOS updates. So. Uh, the only updates software wise that we're doing is on HP Prime. And the HP connectivity kit uh, currently still links to HP servers. And it's it's very simple. The, there is a there is a, a firmware package uh, uploaded onto the HP servers, and then the connectivity kit automatically picks it up and shows you that when you connect your prime if there's a new version or not. Uh, we cannot use that system anymore because HP is out. So we have uh, launched our own FTP server where we will be putting these files. And we are currently working on a new version of the Connectivity Kit software, which will replace the old one in, uh, completely. And that one will be linked to a Moravia server. So, uh, and that will be the only version that there is. So uh, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, if you're using the Connectivity Kit, the new Connectivity Kit that is, it will automatically be linked to the right location. So that should not be an issue. Uh, if you're referring to the website, um, that is uh, geolocated. So it depends on in which location you are. Uh, and if you've set that, uh, added those settings, of course, it will either redirect you to Moravia site or to Royal site, but uh, content wise, it should not be that difficult. I know one of the problems was even the connectivity kit will say there's an update. And we're going to update this for you. 
but then it says, no, we can't update it, <laughs> sort of thing. But it goes through and goes through pretending it's doing an update and doesn't update. No, no, it had to do with that server issue that I was referring to earlier, is that it's currently still referring to HP servers and uh, I agree, it's a it's a pain in the butt, but uh, it's something that we're working on very hard. But it's it's more than just uh, putting a file up there. We need to relaunch the whole software, and it needs to be connected to the FTPs, and it it was much more than we expected as well. And hopefully, that should be all finished in uh, in November. Okay, thanks. I think that's everybody. Um, <laughs> Um, my details are known with the uh, with the organization. So if there's any questions after this, or you want to suggest something, then uh, yeah, feel free to send me an email. Uh, I got a lot of them after the last HCC uh, conference, so I'm a bit afraid of what this will do. But I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> we uh, again, we value your your input a, a lot. So, uh, because you guys uh, know more than, than I do. So, uh, this, this is really appreciated. And I, I hope that you will continue to uh, to support HP, of course, and, and the, uh, the HP calculators. Thank you. Thank you, Clem. Thank you. Thank you.